Good morning and welcome to another edition of The Morning Devotional. My name is Pastor William Hill, the pastor of Providence Church, a congregation of the Presbyterian Church in America. We are located in Evansville, Indiana, and you can get more information about the church at the conclusion of this video. Today, today, video. today is Thursday, uh, February 24th, 2022. This is edition number 126 of season four of the morning devotional. We are working our way through the Westminster Shorter Catechism. We come to question number 91 uh, today. But let's pray first and then we'll consider the question and answer uh, together. Our Father in heaven, as we come uh, before you again on a, another day, a day that you have ordered for us, that we might walk in your ways and do what you have commanded, we pray that you would give us grace and strength and help your spirit to guide us as we consider uh, these very important truths as uh, gleaned from your word. We pray that this time would strengthen your people, it would help them, that you'd forgive us for our sins, you would cleanse us from all unrighteousness, even as you have promised to do. May we walk in your ways, may we watch and pray, lest we enter into temptation. May you show forth your kindness and favor to we, your people, we ask for Christ's sake. Amen. Well, we come to question number 91 of the um, Shorter Catechism. Um, much of what we have discussed over the last number of days has fallen out of question number 85, which asks, what doth God require of us that we may escape his wrath and curse due to us for sin? And we've been focusing on the diligent use of all the outward means whereby Christ communicates to us the benefits of redemption. And we've seen the issue related to faith, repentance, and, of course, the word and prayer as given to us uh, in the question and answers of the uh, catechisms that followed, the questions that followed from question number 85. Today we come to the, uh, the issue of the sacraments. Now the sacraments are again another outward means whereby Christ communicates to us the benefits of redemption, much the same way as the Word of God is an outward means. Uh, and prayer, uh, sacra the sacraments are as well. We know that in the New Testament, the sacraments uh, of the New Testament are baptism, and the Lord's Supper. They differ in that one is done only once, uh, the other is done repeatedly. And so baptism, of course, is something that, that we receive to ourselves one time. It's administered to us once, but the Lord's Supper is that which comes to us um, often. You, know, you may be in a church that practices the celebration of the Lord's Supper weekly, monthly, quarterly, yearly, whatever the case may be, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you remember the Lord's death until he comes. But here the question is talking about both sacraments. Question number 91, how do the sacraments become effectual means of salvation? The answer is that the sacraments become effectual means of salvation, not from any virtue in them or in him that doth administer them, but only by the blessing of Christ and the working of his spirit in them that by faith receive them. Now there are a number of things here to consider as we uh, ponder this question. First, um, they are effectual means of salvation, but not from any virtue in them. That is to say, nothing magical happens, as it were, to the bread or to the cup. Uh, we do not practice the doctrine of transubstantiation, in which is taught uh, by the Roman Church that the body and blood, the cup, the bread and the cup become the actual body and blood of Christ. That is repugnant to common sense. Um, not to mention it's just, it, it, it's just completely foreign to the, to the scriptures. But we do believe that God uses them as ordinary things, it sets them apart uh, for a holy use and a holy end. But there is no virtue in them, it's not magic. So as you approach the Lord's Supper and you take the bread and the cup, nothing uh, magical happens to you just by virtue of the fact that you consumed both of those elements. It's also not dependent upon the one who administers them. That is to say that the minister of the gospel, and it needs to be a minister of the gospel, rightly ordained, and that is why it is my position that the Roman, Roman Catholic baptism is not valid because the priest is not a minister of the gospel. Um, the Roman Church has denounced the true gospel. They did that at the Council of Trent when they declared that those who believe in justification by faith alone is anathema, is accursed. And so they, um, they brought damnation upon their own communion when they denounced the essence of the true gospel justification by faith alone. And so a priest is not a minister of the gospel. Uh, that communion, in my opinion, is apostate. 
However, as it is rightly administered, it's not dependent upon the one who is doing the administration or performing at the, who is uh, laboring behind the Lord's table. And that is to say that a minister of the gospel who, who, um, who is rightly ordained administers this. Uh, he wrestles with sin. He is a sinner like everybody else who's participating in it. He too must partake and participate in the meal for what it represents to us, just as in baptism. Um, in the Lord's Supper, the significance and the efficacy of it is not dependent upon the one who is ministering in, on Christ's behalf. And so, what does it depend on? Well, the Catechism tells us it doesn't depend on the one administering it, that is, baptism or the Lord's Supper, but it depends on the blessing of Christ. These are his sacraments that he has given to the church. We know that from Matthew 28. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We also know that the Lord's Supper is that which he instituted in Matthew 26, 26 and following, wherein he gave the sacrament to his disciples as a perpetual uh, 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 gift to the church to nourish and strengthen his people on their journey to their heavenly rest. It depends on him. It depends on the working of his spirit at the meal. But of course, we do have a part to play in it, and that part is, as given by the answer to the catechism question, it's it, it, working in them, working of his spirit in them, that by faith receive them. Now, we need to receive them by faith. We need to believe that they are what they are, that they are sacraments, that they are given to the church, that they are given to God's people to help them, to nourish them, to strengthen them, to equip them, uh, to, to uh, hold them accountable, and, and to remind them of God's favor for them, God's love, His forgiveness. All of these things are wrapped up in, in the administration of the uh, sacrament. Um, in a few editions, we're going to get into more specifics of baptism and the Lord's Supper using the larger catechism to help us and guide us. I'm convinced that many people in the church today, they, they take the sacraments of the Lord's Supper specifically, but, um, but they really do not fully grasp and understand um, uh, its worth and value in the life of the church and the life of the believer. But again, it doesn't depend on the one who get, pronounces the words of institution. It's not dependent on the one who places the water on the child or the adult convert, it is, in fact, dependent upon the Spirit of God who blesses the sacrament because He is the one who instituted it. Just a couple of references just to support this idea. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 7, uh, Paul is talking about divisions in the church. That's the immediate context. But he says here, So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. And so, the minister may be struggling with particular issues. He may have fallen into grievous sin the night before. It doesn't change the efficacy of the, of the sacrament. The, the efficacy of the sacrament is dependent upon the Spirit of God who gives the increase in it. And also in uh, 1 Corinthians 1, 12 through 17, again, Paul is dealing with division in the church. And, um, and so we read there in these verses 12 to 17, what... It, what I mean is that each one of you says, I follow Paul, or I follow Apollos, or I follow Cephas, or I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you, or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one may say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone for Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with words of eloquent wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. Now the main point here, in, in related to our discussion on this matter, is that the issue is, is that these sacraments come from the Lord himself. And it is he that gives the increase to it, it is he that is working in them. It is not dependent upon a man. So whether one says, I follow Paul, and he's baptizing, or I follow Apollos, and he's baptizing, or I follow Cephas, and he's baptizing, it is dependent upon the Lord Jesus Christ and his spirit working in, that, in, in, in the sacrament. So this is relatively basic information that many of you probably know already, but it is important to be reminded of this as we move forward because we're going to start considering the issues of, of the sacraments. What is a sacrament? What are the sacraments in the New Testament? What is baptism? 
and what is the Lord's Supper. And we're going to deal more specifically with many different issues related to both of the sacraments that have been given to the church. But this is a good introduction into these important truths. So remember, the means, they are a means of salvation, but not because of the, the, the little piece of bread in the cup. That Those are not magical elements. They don't become magical elements. It doesn't depend on the one who is administering it, whether baptism or the Lord's Supper, whether the water, the cup, or the bread, but it's dependent on the blessing of Christ. It's dependent upon His Spirit working, and it's dependent on us then, therefore, by faith receiving that which Christ offers to us. We'll get into that more in future editions. Well, I trust these times are helpful for you, and uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave me a note. Um, the way to contact me is there before you on the screen. And so until the Friday edition, when we consider uh, Shorter cate Catechism, uh, question number 92, what is a sacrament? May the Lord bless you today. May you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. God bless.